What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Random Retro Podcast. I am one of the hosts, Zach, and hosting with me for the last episode of Picard is Jenny, and as always, is Chris. What's up, guys? How you doing? Hello. Great to be here, Zach. Awesome. Always great to be here. <laughs> yes, yeah. and we are here for our final review of Star Trek Picard Season 3. I yeah, know, a little bit of a tear shed there. Um, it's been quite the journey from episode one to this uh, final episode, and we are excited to be here and share our final thoughts with you of Picard Season 3 mm -hmm. as we go through it and we talk about what happened, what our thoughts are, and uh, we are going to give you our final rating of the season. <laughs> so what for those of you who have just tuned into us for the first time or are returning, what Chris and I like to do is we like to give our our random red shirt podcast rating uh, we do for movies and 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 shows where we rate a show or a movie from one to five com badges with one being the absolute worst thing you've ever seen in your entire life and five being something that absolutely blew your socks off and you just couldn't believe it how amazing it was um, and then, or anything in between. Sometimes we'll say, oh, if I could rate it 10 out of five com badges, I would. But <laughs> we will keep ourselves that. So, Jenny, this will be your opportunity to give your own com badge rating for Picard Season 3. Um, so, yeah, the finale. We're here. We made it, and we've watched it. And uh, if this is your first time tuning in, be sure to uh, go on to Facebook and Instagram and check us out there. Or if you're listening to the audio-only version of this, be sure to check us out on YouTube and subscribe there as well to watch all the video versions of our episodes, uh, reviews, and celebrity guest interviews that we do throughout the series. Um, so, yeah, let's jump mm -hmm. into this. Picard Season 3, Episode 10, The Last generation is the name of the episode so chris take us home my friend oh that'll be outstanding it'll be outstanding to to talk about this oh, jenny the the shuttlecraft that's in your background again what which yes. which shuttlecraft is that the shuttlecraft goddard the old classic playmates oh look i've got a bit oh my goodness oh, it's, even, it's even got a figure still in there <laughs> yeah nice. got guinan's in there too yeah nice <laughs> I mean, uh, that's yeah. pretty fitting. It's pretty fitting. It given, is, right? Yeah. What we're talking about, yeah. It is. I never finished the model um, Enterprise D that I was building when I was 12, so that's in a box in the closet. Yeah. Oh, partially gosh. painted or just put together? Partially partially painted. Partially oh. painted. Like, but nice. not but not well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean. That was before I learned. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're only 12 at the time, right? So yeah. give yourself a little break. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Nice, yeah. nice. That's awesome. So I want to recap where we are now, what we yes. knew going into episode 10 here, the last one. So Vatic has met her epic demise, right? That was quite epic from last time. Data is back. Or this new version, evolved version of Data is back. Jack is Borg. Thank goodness he's not a changeling for Zach. So Jack is Borg. Um, <laughs> not Zach, but Jack. <laughs> That's right, right, Jack. Um <laughs> And so he's taking it upon himself to go try and find the Borg Queen to destroy her. And then in the meantime, he's been captured. So now, now yep. Jack needs rescue. That's right. And then much of Starfleet, everyone 25 and younger, apparently has been assimilated. So much of the fleet has been assimilated um, through the events of Frontier Day. And our, our TNG crew is back and reunited. And they are back with the beautiful and epic Enterprise D. Um, which was awesome. So they are yeah. back in that. Yeah. So that was an incredible reveal from the from the last episode. So that was wonderful. And now we're warping into the soul system. Um, and yet another attempt for the crew to save the galaxy again. Because they haven't done that enough, have they? I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, I, I mean, I have to say like episode 10, it was full, right? It was, was nonstop, high-paced action emotion, uh, a lot more humor than I thought was going to be in it, but plenty of humor. Um, I think there was incredible set pieces in the Enterprise, incredible set pieces in the Titan that we'll talk about, incredible set pieces like in Earth orbit and on the Borg cube. So that was that was wonderful. Um, yeah. And then, you know, as what I was thinking was like, as we go through this episode 10, we'll talk about episode 10, of course, but I think it'd be great to talk about the whole like you said, Zach, the whole season yeah. itself, and then in context of the whole series, the season in context with, with seasons, you know, one and two. 
but like like we were saying before how do you how do you guys feel was did this come too soon like did it meet like initial expectations oh yeah <laughs> it, it, my initial expectations were like here and it's just yeah blew away any expectations i had um nice. yeah but definitely over sooner than i would like yeah 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 zach yeah um we were just talking about this before yeah. we started recording that mm -hmm. in today's streaming culture that we have and binge culture uh we don't get the 20 some episodes a season anymore you know these mm -hmm. these these shows that are on netflix or apple tv or disney plus or paramount plus or whatever uh, it seems like kind of eight to 10 to 12 episodes is kind of the sweet spot. And there's pros and cons to that, right? I mean, you know, if you go back and look at 90s Trek or, or classic Trek, as I call it, the toss through Enterprise stuff, where a majority of the seasons in those series are 20 ish episodes or more, you know, you do have some episodes where like, eh, you could probably get rid of that one, right? And stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I wonder at times if the reason why star trek or people felt like the franchise at the time of enterprise ending was kind of maybe burnt out or needed a break was maybe mm -hmm. because we had gotten too many episodes per season and people will kind of lose interest at times i don't know i don't really understand exactly why what i do know is that in this modern star trek we get about 8 10 12 episodes a season and if it's well done <clears throat> excuse me if it's well done um it leaves you wanting more, yeah. which I think is a good balance, right? Like you're getting a lot of amazing content and then the season ends and you're like, ah, yeah, but I wasn't ready for it to be over yet. Yeah. And that's very much how I felt with Picard season three, right? The first two seasons, it's like, okay, I'm glad that the season's over. Maybe the next season will be better or whatever. But Picard season three, <laughs> Picard season three very much felt like I could go on this ride for a long time. Like this yeah. could be a cross country trip that I'm not ready to be over with yet and take my time with um so yeah it's i felt like it's over too soon uh although maybe not i mean it's always possible we could get a legacy spinoff show there's been rumblings of stuff who knows um but I, I wasn't ready i mean i knew it was the last episode obviously but i was not ready what about you chris what did how, how did you feel <clears throat> i well i want to go into this because i i feel i didn't feel like it was i felt it was a wonderful celebration and mm -hmm. Actually, and I felt like, um, so I'll go into this. It felt like it left it open for so many more possibilities that yeah. launching, launching point, which gets to that, to the first part of what I want to talk about. So, because they're warping, right? They're going into the soul system and they know that Starfleet, the assimilated Starfleet is doing this assault on space dock um, and in earth orbit. And we get a message, an incoming message from the president of the Federation, Anton Spoilers, Chekhov. spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I want to get both of your actions, reactions because my, my initial reaction was I started hearing it and then I wasn't really paying attention to what was being said. Mm -hmm. I was going, all right, this kind of sounds familiar. Um, and, then, and then I started going then i started realizing who was talking yeah and then that that got to me so i actually um you know had to do a double take and kind of listen to that a couple more times to understand what the message was in the first place mm -hmm. so, right. so when when that came up Jen, jenny did you have any initial thoughts when you started hearing that i mean <clears throat> i immediately recognized it yeah I, I i immediately recognized the 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 voyage home callback because i i've watched that movie a lot you know and i mean even even the 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 static that they added the you know just like almost word for word and but like you it took me a minute to be like wait a minute i know that voice yeah. you know that was yeah that was incredible yeah that was awesome i love mm -hmm. i love what he said he said there are all there are always possibilities yeah at the end yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah zach i was thinking about the conversation that you and i were having with walter <laughs> that that one time yeah. That happened yeah yeah i was too um yeah for, the, for those of you who don't know when we went down to um the shuttle pod shows live event in la uh back in february um 
yeah, we had the opportunity to to stand outside the theater at in the entryway and just talk with mm-hmm. Walter Koenig for like 20 minutes. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. Something I'll never forget. Mm-hmm. Talking to one of the OGs, right? The original Star Trek series, Star Trek royalty. Um, and I instantly thought, thought of the same thing, Chris. Like, man, we just <laughs> got a chance to have a conversation. And, and of course, he's also played an amazing character in Bester on Babylon yeah. 5, um, nice. which is incredible too. So, but yeah, that was that was a nice that was a nice touch. I did not, I will say, I'm not maybe it's quick on the uptake here. I did not make the connection of the 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 wording being connected with the president's call in Star Trek 4. Mm-hmm. Maybe I got to go back and watch those original series movies again. I a lot of them I haven't watched in a while, so clearly I uh I need to redo those again, rewatch them. Um <laughs> yeah. but I, I thought it was awesome. I thought it was a nice touch um being I think Chekhov's son, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Pavel Chekhov's yeah. son. Yeah. That yeah. was great. Yeah. Oh, his and name the was name Yeah. Go ahead, Jenny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, and him and, and him being called Anton Chekhov mm-hmm. um in in reference to um Anton Yelchin who played him in the uh the Kelvin movies. Yeah, the JJ movies. Yeah. Yeah. And he yeah. was great in those as a young Chekhov. Like yeah. he was so fantastic. He was also in Terminator Salvation with uh Christian Bale as a young yeah. Kyle Reese. Great yeah, actor. He he had, I think he had like 60 or something films under his belt. Wow. 60? 60, yeah. Or or, or or I think I think that's how many credits he's got on IMDb. Holy like geez. Yeah. He, he wasn't that old either, so that's a lot from, of work. Yeah, from childhood, definitely. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So a really, I, it it's one thing that I love about the Star Trek universe and the Star Trek family is that they, especially in the last few years, have really taken the time and care to make those those references and kind of um, honor, you know, people that we've lost who are part of the family. You know. Yeah, they did that in Discovery with the USS Nog, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I thought that was really cool yeah. for for Aaron Eisenberg um, yeah. passing. So that was awesome. Yeah, you're right. They, the Star Trek family is a pretty tight knit group. Mm-hmm. So if you're an actor or a fan in the franchise, um, you're you're in a literal, you know, of a sense, kind of a family where yeah. um, there's a lot of that recognition. And I think it's I think it's a testament to Terry. I think it's testament to his his crew and the way in which they have gone about this Picard season three by having callbacks, by having yeah. tidbits here and there. And it's not just been like, you could think, say, okay, if it was just stuff for TNG, right. Mm-hmm. Then everybody be, that'd be cool. Right. You're having all these callbacks at TNG because the show is about Picard and his crew. Yeah. But it hasn't just been about that. Has it? There's been callbacks to every thing in Trek that I can think Everything. of so far. Yeah. I mean, at the original series, the movies, the TNG series and movies, DS9, Voyager, all of it. I mean, it's mm-hmm. been awesome. It's like bringing, it's like a giant party for Star Trek, bringing all of the franchise together into this one season. And it's been yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah. It has, I, I saw like a short uh, blurb from Terry Metallis and he was saying this, this kind of post period of the Dominion War was really Kind of an interesting period because so much can happen right you're you're yeah not they're not at war but what are some of the consequences and ramifications from that war that they could kind of explore and kind of experience in the series so i thought it was i thought it was neat i thought it was a very 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 good take absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and i think a lot of those callbacks and the references um they they made sense in the story i mean i mean yeah we go into daystrom and there's like some straight up easter eggs in there that weren't really story related but were just awesome for you know big fans but so many of the 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 references within the story like fit and help the story along you know like the like the the cloaking device from the bounty you know i mean it yeah. wasn't just it wasn't just like oh there's that ship you know it was there was a purpose to it, which was really, really nicely done. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Weaving in the purpose was mm. brilliant, brilliantly done. Brilliantly done. All right. All right. So we'll, we'll kind of, we'll loosely frame it and we can yeah. jump around like where everyone want to jump around, but we can <laughs> lo- loosely frame it like on the, on the enterprise, um, talk about the enterprise scenes, talk about the scenes on the Titan, nice. talk about, talk about the scenes on the, on the board cube, but like 
like as we go, like we're in the enterprise, we're in the well lit enterprise D. <laughs> I love with, that with carpet too. With you. carpet, the well lit yeah. Enterprise D with carpet. We yeah. right. we get we get there and they you know finally they get to the the soul system, and they're realizing hey there's this signal coming from uh, Jupiter, and it looks like there's a huge Borg ship and a huge, apparently a trans warp conduit inside of Jupiter, um, which this is just okay. This is just an aside. Yeah. Um, so there's a trans warp conduit in Jupiter. Um, I had shared like uh, I had read a novel by Ian Banks about uh, gas planets. And in that novel, all of the gas planets had like wormholes in them to connect kind of a network. Oh, that's cool. Of, uh, mm. of planets. So I thought, oh, made me think of that. And I, I don't know if that was intentional on this, but but um, that's awesome. yeah. So so that that was there. We've got the board board cube in Jupiter. We have Deanna sensing that. All right. Apparently. Jack is somewhere on that board cube, and that board cube is sending sending signals to um, to the fleet to give orders. And we've got some some neat science uh, sciencey stuff from Beverly to um, kind of detect Jack's brainwave. So that that was great. And we've got, I think, <laughs> some great great humor in there. I want to hear your reactions too. Where where eventually, you know, they decide. Okay, they decide there's going to be an away team, right? There's going to be a away team with Riker and Picard and Worf, and I thought that was that was awesome. So <laughs> that was that was funny, Zach. How did you take it? Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was good. And you know, when they they talk about, uh, I think Data wanted to jump on the the, yeah. the the away team, and he kind of gets a little emotional. He's like, "I want to go," or whatever. And they're like, "No, Data, we need you to stay here," and everything. Uh, I, I do want to say though. So the 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 Enterprise warps into the Soul System, right? Yeah, and you get this absolutely spectacular view coming over the the soft section. Then it turns around, and then there's Jupiter, and you see the great the giant red spot, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Which is a massive storm in real life on Jupiter. It's it's yeah. many, I don't know, it's hundreds of times, but it's many 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 times larger than Earth. It's this. Mm -hmm massive storm system that's been there for a long millennia yeah. whatever right and so to have that to have the board cube like sticking out of it i don't know if mm -hmm. it's scientifically accurate if the board cube could survive the force winds and the destructive nature of that storm but it makes for an epic looking scene i mean it oh, yeah. was spectacular we, you know you look across tng right you don't get too many episodes where the enterprise d is back in the soul system right there's not oh. too many episodes where the enterprise comes home yeah so or, or if it does it's at earth exactly so yeah. to see the enterprise flying around the soul system and it's headed to jupiter and that scene the borg cube like kind of sticking out it was pretty spectacular i know that's not a hundred percent exactly what we're talking about with the away team that that's comes right good. after it yeah. yeah but uh yeah i thought that was pretty cool but yeah that that whole little funny exchange between the crew as as they're trying to de debate the uh the starfleet code of who should go and who shouldn't and technically picard shouldn't go but he kind of has to because yeah. it's sun over there right so yeah yeah jenny what about you yeah. um well just in in talking about just just that initial shot of the ship i mean i've been the rewatch that i just did it was the first time that i'd watched the um the hd remaster of tng yeah and i've been struck even then at just oh these shots of the enterprise are like like they're so clear they're so and then this like this shot of the ship like i just keep watch like like i keep rewinding it and watching it over again it's it's just spectacular yeah. it's oh god it was There's... one of my favorite scenes like ship mm -hmm. scenes from the whole series yeah it was absolutely yeah. gorgeous yeah absolutely so i mean right right there and and actually on the way into this episode we've got that shot going through that nebula that's very yeah. very close to the 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 beginning of the tng um opening credits yep um oh god it's just yeah, like <laughs> I was very happy. Um, but yeah. yeah, yeah. And then and then we're in the ship and we've got um like Michael Dorn's delivery of these <laughs> of these little like and then little uh, zingers. I mean, yeah, yeah, like Michael Dorn and Jonathan Frakes yeah. together are comedy gold. You oh, know, yeah. Hundred percent. 
you know just, yeah do you, yeah <laughs> you know, it's just so good yeah and that wasn't even like they had more kind of moments in this in this episode mm-hmm. too which was great i think they just yeah. made an awesome awesome pair it was great and everyone had everyone had great moments in this in this episode which, yeah which was awesome yeah i think the comedy chris was really well placed with the writing right because yeah. it's like you get these really intense emotional scenes this huge dramatic build up and they're like okay let's cut that dramatic you know build up with a knife for a second pluck in some good well-timed mm-hmm. humor whether it's yeah. Riker and war for what have you and then we'll we'll keep going right take a mm-hmm. little bit of a like a little yeah. breath from the drama have a laugh and then and then move forward which i thought mm-hmm. is 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 really fantastic writing yeah yeah they went they went back and forth i'm curious what you guys think about because because shortly after that right they go there's a little bit of humor yeah and then and then the three uh riker picard and Worf are about to leave and and picard turns around and he says to the crew right it's been it was something like it's been an honor to serve to serve with you and i think yeah. around the same time you get the look between riker and deanna right and they're mm-hmm. and then where you're like I'm not sure that Riker's coming back from this. Right? Yeah, that, 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 is, that is what I felt like. Yeah, yeah. Like, like there. What do you guys think? That v- very yeah. much that it's you know just yeah. I mean, I I mean, I I really tried to go in with no expectations on this at all. Like just oh. just you know sitting back and letting it letting it happen, you know. But I was like, they're not gonna because you know I. We want we want a happy ending, I think, for these people. So the idea that all of a sudden it's like super serious was a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was the same. I was thinking mm-hmm. they wouldn't, would they? Wouldn't they? Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> they <were laughs> when we just went through all that work to get data back, now they're not going right? to take someone else away from yes. us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You similar, Zach? Similar feelings on? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, the whole time I'm thinking to myself as I'm watching this, you know, we've heard Terry say up to this point that you know it's going to be a great send off and everything like that, mm-hmm. and without spoiling anything. So I'm thinking to myself, I don't think a great send off involves killing one of the main cast members. I think I really do think if they killed off a main cast member, not in the way that Data did. Mm-hmm. I think there might be some rioting in the streets because <laughs> yeah, beca- yeah, be, just yeah. because you, like you said, Jenny, I think, I think yeah. people wanted that kind of warm, fuzzy, like yeah. this, the cruise, the cruise together again. Why would you do all this work to bring them back only to kill somebody off? Yeah. So, but, but at the same time, Chris, I had the same, same thoughts you were where I was like, wait a second. <laughs> there were multiple <laughs> moments where I'm like, they're, they're, they're not actually going to do this. Are like, they're yeah. not actually going to kill somebody off. Are they like, no, no, they're not going to. And then I, it's like, I have like this multiple personality for a second. I'm like, they're not going to do that. Right. Well, they could, are you seeing what's yeah, happening? Yeah. No, no, no. They're not going to, you know, I'm this back and forth, back and forth. And I'm really torn. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I went through the same exact feelings. Yeah. That's awesome. Now you guys, Zach, a little bit ago, you were talking about, um, kind of the, the, the visualness and, and the ship and how that looked with, and Jenny, you too, with the, um, with Star Trek and HD. I have to say, like my, this this season, um, ev- every time we see a starship or we see a spacing is just beautiful. They just do a oh, tremendous yeah. job with it. Yeah. Um, I know it was a few episodes ago, but uh, I remember. Uh, I think it was the Intrepid, uh, the Intrepid and Titan kind of like, met up, right? Yeah, and the yeah. Intrepid comes up. Like I was like, oh. wow. Yeah. That's yeah, one that of my incredible. Yeah, that was one of my favorite scenes they did. I, I think we do got to give a little shout out to Doug Drexler on the ships because he was the like he told us and and we had him on with us a couple times, Chris, mm-hmm. that he was the final authority on blessing off and approving these starships in this yeah. season because yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you have Doug doing that, right? Yeah. And so um he you know Terry brings back the these guys and gals. Uh, who know Trek inside and out. And it it's very apparent on the screen, right? You get, it, it, Doug mentioned several times when we, we've had him on about there are certain things that Star Trek fans in particular are looking for 
to have that feeling of, okay, I know this. I even it may be a new yeah. ship or a new design, mm -hmm. but there are things like, okay, I recognize that. That's Starfleet, or yeah. I recognize that. That's a Klingon ship or whatever. There, there are certain indicators, certain pieces of the ship that people are looking for to recognize that. And I think you saw that throughout mm -hmm. these ships, unlike in season two, where you had a fleet of every ship that looked the exact same. Like they just took a bunch of one ship and copied it a million times over. Mm -hmm. You got unique ships in this. You got unique names, unique designs. You had designs, I believe, that you saw in Star Trek Online. Like I believe the Enterprise F. A bunch of them, yeah. Yeah, Enterprise. Mm -hmm. the Enterprise F was an Odyssey class, I Odyssey think, that's class, from yeah. Star Trek Online, yeah. which I think is pretty cool. And they make it canon by putting it in the show. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, the ships were amazing. It was incredible to see that. And I think you're Absolutely. right, Chris, the vi visually, they really knocked it out of the park with the starships and a lot of these space scenes, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's transition now. Let's go to the Titan because there's a lot of stuff that, that happens on the Titan too. Like we're, where we yeah. open there and we've got, we've got seven kind of leading the charge with uh, a few people that haven't, a few of the crew that haven't been assimilated. Yeah. Uh, try and try and retake the bridge so they they go on the bridge and we see seven rafi and those other crew members like they're they're shooting the bridge crew um i wasn't like really sure what was going on like at first because i see them getting shot and then they're being transported and i didn't know yeah i didn't know are they being transported onto another ship is or are they escaping or yeah yeah, yeah i was thinking yeah. were they getting beamed out by the borg or something like yeah. that or yeah mm -hmm. So that was pretty innovative when, when we find out like, oh, oh that's awesome. They're just being transported to the transporter room yeah. <laughs> and being, <laughs> being, being, being held there. Um, so I, I love that. I think it's great to see Seven exert so much uh, confidence like and, and authority in retaking, yeah. in retaking the bridge. And then I love those following scenes where, you know, they've retaken the bridge and she says, all right, everyone to your posts. And yeah. we get some, we get some more. I, that's some of my favorite humor in in oh my God. in that in that part too. Um, but yeah, the cook, the cook <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> turns out to be a hero. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Which I find it ironic that they have a cook on the ship. Yeah, you have you know replicators oh, yeah. and everything, right? What What's the only Star Trek show that I'm aware of, other than Neelix? on Voyager mm -hmm. who had a cook enterprise yeah Star exactly. Trek enterprise mm -hmm. yeah that, that's what I thought immediately I'm like oh they've got and, a cook now again like they did in enterprise yeah and you know who made the food on the show yeah Dorothy like, yeah yeah Doug Drexler's wife yeah uh Dorothy she um, did the food styling for the dinners really yeah 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 she did yep 100 percent yeah that was so cool I didn't know that at all and the yeah. cast loved her food by That's the way, awesome. from all the anecdotes I've read, wow. they could not get enough of her food. Yeah. Wow. Like it didn't just look good on screen. It was amazing, you know, taste wise too. So yeah. 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 I thought it was a nice touch that, that, that there was a cook. Sorry. The cat is just shifting on the paper there. <laughs> it's all goody sleeping. Um, <laughs> but I loved, I love that there was a cook because the first time that we're introduced to Captain Shaw, he's eating a steak. And the idea that Captain Shaw would want, it's like, no, I'm getting a cook, you know? If I'm gonna have, if I'm gonna have steak, I want a cook, you know? I, I think that's just very, I don't know, I love it, it's cool. It's fitting Ooh, of his yeah. character, yeah. 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 So this has to be the best cook slash pilot in, <laughs> in Starfleet. <Sierra. laughs> It's in, yeah, it's funny too because you you you, you do get like in so I, I also thought of this when yeah. I saw the cook, even though this character was not a cook, but in mm -hmm. TNG you had Moth the Barber. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Who would who would he, you know, Worf? I remember the episode of Worf comes in to get a haircut and he's like, you know, just love a top Worf and trying to make all these funny jokes, and Worf's not amused at all and everything. And I kind of thought of the barber, right? This like random character that does this random job on this starship, and here's the cook. It's mm -hmm. kind of a random job on a ship where you can just replicate anything. So yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. yeah. The cook was precious. He's like, ma'am, you know, I'm just a cook. Yeah. I, I didn't finish the course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My mom, My was, mom sick. was sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
It was great. I had to go work at the deli. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Seven's like, no, sit down. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. It also mm-hmm. goes back to I'm gonna get deep for about this. Yeah. One. Yeah. Please. Like, it, it also goes back to the idea that Star Trek makes you realize that anybody has the opportunity to do anything they want to do if they put their mind to it. Oh, very right. Very That's nice. it, oh, yeah. A little, little bit deep. Um, yeah. It doesn't mean that you can just go out and do anything. I mean, you got to go, you got to get go through training and you got to yeah. learn, mm-hmm. right? And stuff like that. But it means that that um, it doesn't matter where you come from, what your background, what your walk of life is, that you have the potential to do many great things, including be a cook who also flies a starship. Yeah. <laughs> so that 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 was making me think like, you know, this idea that here's this 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 character, right? Who is just a cook, quote unquote, didn't mm-hmm. even finish training, but yet is put into this position and given the opportunity to step up and do something great. Yeah. And he does. So that's what popped in my mind. That's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome, man. <laughs> once in a while, Chris. <laughs> once in a while. It, it happens to the, the best of us once in a while. <laughs> but this, like what Jenny was talking about earlier with, um, purpose and bringing back mm-hmm. so the you know they because they use they they're using the cloaking device you know shortly after this they figure out oh um the fleet you know because they're thinking about how do we go off of fleet mode and then they discover oh it's by line, line of sight so if we use our cloaking device we're going to go off of fleet mode but this goes to jenny's point we're like hey every time they bring in something uh from our legacy or from the past it is bringing it in with with a purpose so Mm -hmm. i love that right and they're bringing in they they engage the cloaking device and and we've get we get some i don't know what you guys felt but i thought the those the kind of the battles between the titan and the rest of the fleet was great you know they go in and it was awesome to see um Mm -hmm. and and seven you know seven did a great job and can we talk i want to get your reaction about um seven does a very very motivational kind of speech inspiring speech to her crew there i want to get your reactions on that because that i think is the probably we haven't seen seven deliver a speech like that ever before i don't recall Mm -hmm. her having the opportunity to do that but um what did you guys think about that if you can remember if you can remember that Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it was it was wonderful because we've yeah. seen this progression with her and seen her, you know, sort of building confidence in that role, and also even just the long term arc of seven. You know, the seven that we met in in the fourth season of Voyager wouldn't have had the the empathy or the understanding to to even know that that was needed, you know? So it's, it's really, um, it's really remarkable seeing just how far she's come. Like, I thought, like, that was a really, that was a really important moment for her. I thought that was just, oh, yeah, (laughs) really fantastic. And, and really laid out the stakes of the situation too. Like, you know, the six of us on the bridge right now are it. Yeah were it yeah yeah that was well said zach yeah it, it, i think it's the next step in seven's <clears throat> kind of evolution as a character yeah. right this idea that she's growing uh in her confidence to lead uh growing in her confidence as a starfleet officer um i'll be honest with you the beginning of the season uh it's great that she showed some loyalty to picard and 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 folks, but I, I I'm not I'm not a huge personally I'm not a huge fan of Starfleet officers who almost kind of go rogue mm-hmm. and dis and and are are blatantly disobedient because I just think it it would it would it would really unhinge and disrupt the balance of your command structure and this idea of good order and discipline amongst the crew and stuff like that. Um, so one of the reasons why I didn't like the way that discovery started where they have Burnham just go off and mutiny against the captain and take over this ship to go find something. I thought that was a bit absurd. Um, but I like that seven, I think has come from the point of the beginning of season three, where she has been very disobedient towards her captain and Shaw. Mm -hmm. Right. But over the course of the season, I think you see her begin to learn 
what it's like because as far as we know in season three i don't think she's been this first officer for a crazy amount of time has she mm-hmm. has she been out on and on the titan as the first officer i mean she's like she's been on the first uh the first officer on titan for years and years and years and years mm-hmm. i think it's a fairly short amount of time yeah so i like the idea that her character is changing it's it, her 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 Characters evolving and the confidence is growing and she's learning how to become a Starfleet officer. She's learning what it takes to be a real leader. And I think this particular moment sets her up for later on in the episode that we'll see at the end. Um, And I think it sets her up to continue to grow into her, into the position she eventually becomes, which we'll talk about later. But yeah, I think, I think, I think it was a, it was a great speech and it, it, I think puts a lot of confidence in the people around her that, Hey, she's got it right. Like she's in charge. She knows what she's doing. She realizes what it takes. And it it was great. Mm -hmm. You brought like a couple, you guys have been talking about evolution, uh, which, which is great too. I think there's, there's the different themes of evolution in this, um, in this series. Like you have the evolution of, of different characters in characters and their individual characteristics and personalities like with seven right Mm -hmm. and and then we have the evolution of um this was an artificial evolution of the changelings when they were uh, you know kind of genetically engineered to change that yeah we have a uh you know a little bit of of evolution that we were talking about with relationships between deanna deanna and Riker. so Mm -hmm. i I love that word i love that that theme that word and that kind of idea has come up yeah um, in evolution in this and that's great um, what I really liked about Seven in this situation is that so Seven has said and she's said to her her remaining crew, "Hey, we are we are it." Just like Jenny said, we're we are Starfleet. We're all yeah. that's left of Starfleet, and all that is left of Star Starfleet and the commander is Seven, who is a former Borg, or or yeah. she would say, "I you know for a long time she still held that identity." I am bored, mm-hmm. right? Like on Voyager, she she would always say, "I am bored," but now we have this uh, circumstance where we have a Borg army, an assimilated Borg army, and the the one person that's commanding, kind of the opposing hope, is mm-hmm. a former Borg. So I really like that that is set up as the situation. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. Can I add one thing here? Yeah, please. That this is what. I think makes Star Trek <clears throat> really, really good. This is when Star Trek's at its best, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. If you look, um, my favorite series, DS9. I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to go into DS9, but but the reason why I love it so much is because the the concentration on character development mm-hmm. and the characters themselves. Right? If you go watch uh, Shuttlepod Show's interview of Iris Stephen Bear, who was a showrunner for DS9, yeah. he talked about that was the focus of ds9 was on the characters more than the new planet of the week and things like that this show picard season three has done that i think i think the focus has been i mean yeah the other storyline but the focus has really been on the characters character building character development relationship building relationship development i think that's when star trek is at its finest i love as you know Chris, Mm -hmm. i love the explosions and the photon torpedoes and the starships and the the battles and stuff but man this series, this this season of Picard has really brought and stepped up the character development and, and the relationship building, the relationship development. And I think that, to me, has been one of the greatest things that I've seen in this season is that, that emphasis. So th- this, to me, is when Star Trek's yeah. at its finest, when it is having characters go through things, when it's having characters start at one point – and work their way to a new point. Um, all of that yeah. stuff to me is what makes Star Trek its greatest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, sorry, yeah. I just wanted to add Very that point well before, said. before yeah. I forget it. Awesome. <laughs> that was excellent, Zach. Well said. Awesome Thanks. work. Awesome work. Yeah. So on the on the Titan, so eventually they're doing all this awesome work on the Titan. Eventually their cloaking device is is uh, sabotaged by the those crew members that have been assimilated mm-hmm. i didn't catch how they got out of the transporter room but they just eventually overpowered oh the, okay the lock on the door yeah okay. yeah they like messed with yeah. it or something and yeah and there were just enough of them that they could physically 
do it you know yeah i think they knew they only had a limited amount of time once they got them in there oh yeah. okay you know gotcha <laughs> gotcha so <laughs> cloaking device down and yeah. then, then the titans in trouble after that so but now let's let's transition to the to the board cube and kind of inside the board cube and getting ready to rescue and, and find jack and we've got picard and Riker and Worf on on the board cube and there's a little bit of quiet moments a little bit of humor there at, at first when they beam onto the board board cube because yeah Riker's saying oh I don't like it being quiet and Worf is saying why are you complaining or <laughs> <laughs> well this I think it's great so they they do a, a little bit of searching around but I think uh let's talk about this moment that is between the three uh mm. between Picard and Riker and Worf where Picard you know, says now it's time for me to be a father. What do you guys think? <laughs> go, go ahead, Jenny. Jenny, this this one hit hard, maybe. This, this... Just he like Patrick Stewart like yeah. brought it. Um, that was so you know, especially when yeah, like like I, I need to be a father, but but then when he's sort of saying goodbye to them, and he's you know, and he's just I I. I appreciate it or I just you know it's it's meant so much to me and he just kind of like he can't even sort of finish the thought and it's just so raw and such I think uh because I mean I mean Picard of, of of 30 years ago wouldn't have wouldn't have let that out you know I mean I mean he's he's like you guys mean the world to me um and this this relationship that we have it's 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 everything you know um like it really oh that hit <laughs> that hit. yeah yeah man yeah it did mm -hmm. yeah zach yeah it it <clears throat> was <clears throat> it was pretty special it, it 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 goes to this idea in my mind of um a father sacrificing himself for his child yeah. right i mean you think about I, the way the way they frame it it kind of appears as though um picard i don't know that he expects maybe to come back mm -hmm. i think he go i i think the way they frame the way the way patrick stewart portrays it that um he goes into it and the look on his face and everything to me came across as though he's not, you know, he doesn't think he's going to get out of it. Yeah. Um, so this idea, and of course you, you've, I mean, the idea of, of, a, of a <clears throat> parent sacrifice themselves for the child is written throughout human history, mm -hmm. right. With stories and, and tales and things like that. Um, and so it's an admirable thing. Um, that's not a pun to Admiral Picard, <laughs> um, but it's very <laughs> admirable uh, that, a, a parent would want to do something like that, right? To sacrifice mm -hmm. himself for the child. So definitely hit it in the feelers, you know? I, I I think if, for me personally, if I didn't have kids, I don't know that would have affected me as much, but the idea of, okay, one of my kids is in a situation where they could die and I have the potential ability to save them from that, would I do that a thousand times out of a thousand times? Um, and so that's kind of how I how I pitched it that, much, that yeah. way. And I think it says a lot about where Picard is in this journey that he's... You know, he's, there's no, there's no question in his mind, you know, I mean, this is, this is my kid, yeah. you know, my, yeah. he's, this is my son, I have to save him, you know, and that's, um, even just from the beginning of the season, that's, uh, he's, he's really come, he's come far, you know. Abs oh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a, it's a night and day, it's a 180, yeah. right, from where he was at the beginning of the season. Um, Chris, you mentioned the, you mentioned the funny anecdote uh as they're getting ready to be more to the board cube right and yeah rikers <clears throat> picard's getting ready to leave and rikers like well you're not going alone and Worf <laughs> says and i will make it a threesome and rikers uh, like do you even hear yourself oh my gosh yeah <clears throat> oh, i love God. that oh yeah, i love I, that i literally i literally lol'd on yeah, that oh one. yeah because that yeah. was i mean my I, we've said this before on previous reviews of episodes of picard season three 
Mm-hmm. I don't think it can be stated enough how good Michael Dorn is at delivering these comedic yeah. lines. The timing of them, right, is just yeah. spectacular. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, when we were talking about, like, because this, this scene in itself, like, with the three of them on the board cube, you know, it's not that long, right? Mm. You, you, even if it's, maybe it's 30 seconds, maybe less, yeah. maybe less than that. But but I, I do love that there is all that history that goes into that scene mm-hmm. there. R- what Riker says, I love, as because Riker looks at Picard and says, you know that I know. <laughs> and there's so much within those you know five five words and and then Worf says and Worf is bringing oh. Worf is bringing his 30 years of being a Klingon right and reacting in the only way he can and, mm-hmm. and saying and saying there's like two two phrases that a Klingon never admits to knowing and that's a defeat and farewell um, and not, not only is that so touching like in, in the moment but it's so it also so recognizes and affirms not only Worf's character as who he is, mm-hmm. but how he feels about the captain. So yeah. or the admiral. Mm-hmm. So I thought, wow, that was just that was great. That was great that they did that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And we we do have I mean, after that scene, uh, you know, we get even more intense scenes, but we do have Picard eventually finding Jack Mm -hmm. seeing that Jack has now been assimilated um, and then having that uh, kind of, you know, panic and concern as, as a father and as a parent and then, and then finding the queen. So there's not only like he, okay, he finds Jack, Jack's been assimilated. He's got to deal with that. And then he finds the queen, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, who he's been, you know, probably thinking about off and on in the last over the last 35 years. So we have that uh, reveal of the queen of Alice, at least her voice. And I, I'm not sure if she actually was playing playing the, the queen, but it was we, a different. We, yeah. OK. OK. A so different we, body. Different body. So mm-hmm. we've got the reveal there that so she has survived. She's been kind of. um very much like Voldemort surviving like yeah. maybe, maybe off of the yeah of the uh, uh, you know and en- en- energy from from the drones and the bodies of the drones so mm-hmm. so that trying to make her way and and she's found and connected with Jack along the way right because somehow they were able to communicate but so that reveal of the queen I want to get you guys kind of take take mm-hmm. on what what you guys felt from there and Zach we can start with you on the the queen reveal very alien-esque right ah, yeah, the, the, yeah. the queen the, the mother queen alien and her big setup and she's got the wires coming in and out of her right and she's there and she's got her worker alien very alien-esque feel to it i don't know if that's mm-hmm. what they were going for but that's certainly with all the the wires and the cabling everywhere and the borg queen is up on the wall or you know elevated and then you have jack down there jack even the the way they they put on his borg uh, you know, <clears throat> tech on his body, he very much kind of reminded you of Lacutus. Absolutely. Right? Like yeah. that, he had that look. I mean, he you know, he's not bald like Picard, but I mean, he had the look of Lacutus, just the way they even had the armor on. I'm assuming, or not armor, but the the costume. And he was um, the basic, like the, the first yeah. stage. Yes. So, yeah. And I just went back and watched Best of Both Worlds Part 1 and mm. 2 a couple days ago, just mm. it, or, 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 or ju- just prior to the finale to kind of, you know, reintroduce that and keep it fresh for this mm-hmm. finale and it very much like yeah it looks just like what they did to picard when he came, became locutus um but the scene was was interesting the the borg queen was very vile looking she looked like um she looked very menacing and that she had been kind of rotting somewhere away for a while the the, the question i have on it is how how did that work? Because in first contact, she's killed. You know, he he snaps yes. her. He snaps her 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 proverbial spine, and she dies. And she it, 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 the light is extinguished in her, you know, her Borg head. So mm-hmm. how does she, how is she still alive in this particular instance? It's the 
either yeah we talked about this a little bit last time <laughs> yeah but the but the the general belief is that she somehow kind of uploaded herself back through which is how she ended up in the delta quadrant yeah again. oh yeah for, yeah like cylon for, cylon for yeah yeah mm. for janeway to poison because that's what we're seeing in this cube is the result of that. Yeah, but so then they, but in Voyager, they destroy Unimatrix One, right? That's mm -hmm. part of the way as they're going to the transwarp conduit, and then they sneak out, and all of a sudden they're home. Spoiler: yeah. if you haven't watched Voyager, um, but but yeah, that that was a part I was like, okay, how did how did this work? We and we had, I, mean, I know we had the Borg Queen in season two of Picard, which I know you did a good job of explaining yeah. that she was the. <laughs> alternate timeline yes. Borg. So that's why that kind of makes sense. Um, mm. And I didn't, I didn't actually think about that. So yeah. Um, yeah. I, I thought, I, I thought it was, I thought it set the scene. It set the mood and the tone of that particular scene very well, Chris, mm. the way they had her perched up alien, like uh, menacing, pissed off salty <laughs> you know just yeah i've been i've been stuck away in some bowels of the galaxy somewhere and i'm coming to get my revenge. So very, very well done in that regard. Nice, nice, Jenny. Yeah. yeah, what do you think? Um, well, it's it it's interesting because because there's there's his 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 um communication with Beverly before he kind of goes into the dead zone. Yeah, ties right. in a little bit because he um they're having you know she's trying to lead him to where Jack is and um you know he's saying he you know he's going to go into the part where they're not going to be able to communicate and she starts to you know she's Jean-Luc I you know and he interrupts her and tells her you 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 protected him from the day he was born you you did everything wrong. um yeah. like yeah. and it's that was yeah like that was that was a big moment for them because they haven't had a chance really through you know since their initial conversation to really have that kind of closure on that on that conversation where where he has actually been able to turn around and say we're good I forgive you I understand you know what happened here um so that that was really important and then and then going in and his confrontation then with the queen and when the queen um basically calls herself Jack's mother yeah and Picard is like, you are not her mother. And then just like, um, yeah, then starts fire. Like that's such a, that, did I say her mother? His mother, sorry. Yeah. His mother. Um, but it's such a, like, you know, you know, I love his mom, you know, <laughs> she's up on that ship and you are not her, you know? Yeah. Um, that was because because with him it's always been very personal with the queen like it's it's been about her and him but now he doesn't even he's not thinking about himself at all here you know he's there to protect his son and he is not happy <laughs> this monster you know right. who is m manipulating jack and trying to manipulate him again yeah and oh actually you i didn't even think about that jenny you brought up such like important and beautiful points with his interaction that moment right so they're talking where he and beverly are talking through the mm. through the intercoms that was that was a very very important moment mm. yeah abs absolutely yeah, yeah that's I a 180 <laughs> from where he was when him and beverly see each other for the first time in sick bay i think it was right where when he when they yeah. first meet up at the, in early in the season and they're all of a sudden he just goes off the rails about how I can't believe you didn't tell me and now all of a sudden it's like hey you did everything right and yeah I, you know he's he, a bit of a acknowledgement that you know I understand why you did what you did the way you did it um and yeah so I think that was a great a great kind of uh, mending of the fences mm -hmm. for the especially two of them. especially now I think because because he is at a point now where he understands I am a father, this is my son. And I, of course, his mother did this to protect him. Of course, you yeah. know, that's the, that's, I, I think a huge moment for him just in terms of that journey and, and understanding what it means to be a parent. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when we had Doug Drexler on, we were, 
we were talking about that moment in sick bay where mm -hmm. uh, picard's kind of reaction was like zach you said like off the rails and uh doug uh, this has changed my perspective like considerably because doug, doug said you know picard was wrong there he should have come come into that situation mm -hmm. that original situation with more compassion yeah. right and, and understanding and so <clears throat> i think this was yeah this this scene where picard's on the board cube and beverly is talking very important scene and it's mm -hmm. great that they have have this moment and so that's awesome awesome to yep. kind of to acknowledge and recognize yeah. yeah and i mean it's not over for picard so he's got that moment with with beverly and now he's got to try and find and reach his son so so he is like shortly after that trying to reach jack you know and mm -hmm. can't reach jack can't get to him while he's outside of the i guess outside of the borg uh boredness outside of boredness yeah, <laughs> yeah. um <laughs> and then you know makes that decision to, to say okay i'm gonna go i'm going inside mm -hmm. and so he assimilates i guess self-assimilates because <clears throat> that's what it would be yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and, and go goes in there and then we have the <clears throat> excuse me we have the scene with with jack and picard which was <clears throat> you know i'm not sure which scene is most heavy but this may be maybe the heaviest scene of of the episode but you know you've you've got to be very yep. very very touching scene there about uh picard trying to to get through to jack that hey this is this is not real yeah um and and you belong outside but I'll, I'll start with you jenny and see what you th um yeah i mean he i love how once he's in there i feel like picard is it's he he really has left his fear and his his own trauma like he's just he's he's done with it he's so focused on jack um and for me um the the biggest part of that is is you know because jack's saying i don't want to leave I, I i'm happy here you know and he says okay well if you if if you won't leave then i'll stay with you you know mm -hmm. and 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 even just the way that he says it it's not it's not this overblown well then i'll you know he just says it just in the sort of most matter of fact way well then i'm staying you know like i'm staying with you um yeah just <sighs> they <laughs> sorry i'm 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 searching for words here i'm i'm zach <laughs> <laughs> no 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 you don't get to do that you don't get to do that you don't get to do that. How dare you? <laughs> no. Um, yeah, it was it was a very touching scene. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I don't think you'd be wrong, Chris, if you said this was the most heavy scene of the episode um, between mm -hmm. between Picard and Jack. Um, you, you you could argue towards the end of the ep of the episode with the crew, but um, in this particular instance, yeah, it, it's Picard went over there to save his son. Or at the very minimum, sacrifice himself if it meant yeah. saving his son. And in this case, it it kind of be that way. He he would be sacrificing his, you know, himself. I will say that there's a part of me that felt like you could consider it slightly reckless on Picard's part because okay, let's say Picard stays with him, mm -hmm. and they're they're unsuccessful at getting this beacon to turn off which is the communication relay between the board cube and the rest of the fleet out at earth let's say they can't they don't do that now picard's become a board again with all his knowledge he's lacutus again and you have jack who has these powers and he's a board now what the borg are becoming more powerful again and now it's like you know the whole needs of the many outweigh the needs of, <laughs> of the few kind of conundrum here I don't know if you guys thought this or not, Chris. I don't know if you thought this, but I or Jenny, I was thinking this, this the whole time. Like, what happens? If, how does Picard know that they would be successful? What if they weren't successful? Now he's just made the Borg more powerful by having him and Jack as part of this new Borg collective. And 
that could have been disastrous mm. for the Federation, all because he wanted to be with his son, which again, in the moment, as a father, I'd probably feel the exact same mm. way. But I kind of felt a little bit of recklessness there from Picard. Thoughts? How about Jenny? Let's uh, thoughts. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I I'm think, at a loss for words. Go I ahead. don't know. I think <laughs> I think if anything, it speaks to his confidence in his crew that he he feels expendable in this situation because he you know if his job here is to save jack their job is to stop the signal um so i feel like he's he's willing to sacrifice because he knows that they've got it but what if they don't that's, obviously we know but that's, outcome, you know but, but that's but yeah. that's his you know i mean i mean I, I think he he has faith that they can do it yes yeah. Ab absolutely i i just there was a part of me that it. felt I like you it. know it, it is a li i didn't say it was compl overly but it was a little bit reckless on picard oh, sure. saying, oh yeah. i'm gonna stay here well of course he's in the moment right you know i get mm. that but just because they had or just because somebody has done something doesn't mean they will do it again so it's maybe it's a little bit of my pessimist side that says, <laughs> you know, not not that I wouldn't. I mean, if I was in Picard's situation, yeah, I would have complete confidence in my crew because mm -hmm. they have given him no reason not to. Yeah. Anyways, I don't mean to go off on a rabbit trail. No, here. No, just something no. I was thinking through in the scene where I was like, you know, maybe a, a skosh of uh, recklessness there on Picard's part to put mm -hmm. to kind of put potentially his own feelings ahead of of uh the rest of of uh, humanity or even the galaxy in this case yeah mm. that was a good perspective back yeah yeah <clears throat> so when i when i think about this scene uh, this is how i felt about it so i think in this moment this is one of the moments where i feel that picard has demonstrated his most real sense of self-awareness um so as as he talks to jack you know he's explaining and he's he's also demonstrating the things that he's learned in his last 30 years and, and that mm. and then he's learned from his recent experiences with q and with data <clears throat> the dying of data mm. but, twice <laughs> yeah, that's twice <laughs> yes yes um that he's he's explaining to jack like his feelings hey hey i used to feel like you um I used to feel like I was alone and I, I didn't have a family. Um, and I, and then I thought I would join Starfleet and Starfleet would be my family. And I thought it was okay, but it wasn't really okay because I really didn't let them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and then when he's with, you know, when he's now he's talking with Jack and he's bringing all of those experiences that he's learned and, and he's opening himself up completely to jack and saying and and saying you're my family and if you you know if you if you want to stay i'm going to stay with you so i i thought in all of the scenes where i've seen picard that was his most kind of his most moment or his his biggest moment of de demonstrating self-awareness of like mm -hmm. like everything he's learned um mm -hmm. for himself and then kind of giving that uh to jack and so i think I think that was great. I think that was that, yeah. that that was beautiful and um and because you know we we've talked about this a little bit before but you know the show the name of the show is Picard. Mm -hmm. It is it is a character study. Yeah. In, in 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 many ways and I think you know what what did this character learn? Did this character become more? Did he evolve? Did he grow into something more? You know, how how is he now uh fulfilling like his potential um to become the the best human he can be, so I I loved that kind of moment in, in yeah. Picard, and then you know, and then of course if you're a father, if you're a father, it hits you in a much different way, yeah. I suppose, if you're not a father. Mm -hmm. Um, so so that that was there, and that was beautiful. So we'll, Ladies and gentlemen, Chris oh, Hodges. No, 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 <laughs> oh, no, no. No, well, that was that was that was that was, serious. that was great, Chris. That really was. Yeah, but that was. I I, I don't really. I think I love the way you frame that, that the, this, this show is a character study. Mm -hmm. I don't, 
I think that's that's really. I, I guess I really didn't think of it that way in my brain. And and as I mentioned before about the idea of this character development, this is really when Star Trek's at its best. You phrased it perfectly. It's a character study, and I think that's one of the reasons why, especially season three, has been so fantastic because it has been a character study. It, there's been you know there's been the fan service stuff, and there's been other cool things and moments, mm -hmm. but. At the end of the day, you're looking at this idea of of Picard and the way he's developing and the way he's growing and stuff. So well well said, my friend. Well said. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you. We'll go to something a little bit lighter now. But <laughs> so, <laughs> which is we do have we do have um Worf and Riker, you know, looking for the, the signal. Um, oh, this is so good. This yeah, is and, so good. And, and fighting some <laughs> fighting some drones and, and doing that. And Worf is doing his sword play, which which was great. So yeah. I I love. Did you guys find it as funny as I did? I oh my loved, god, it's oh. amazing! I love. I love. I love when right when, when they're fighting and all of a sudden, the you know, Worf sword has a phaser in it, whatever, and he goes. Riker's like, "You had this in there the whole time, a phaser, and you didn't use it." And Worf says, "Swords are fun." <laughs> I also love the fact that it was so heavy that Riker was like, "Oh, like he couldn't even." <laughs> yeah, lift yeah, it. that was fantastic. That, that was heavier awesome. than looks or whatever. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and frank's delivery on that was just like just perfect like he's just he's just he's he's just kind of like mildly annoyed like the whole time with Warf, is it, which is just sorry i was gonna say is it just me or would 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 jonathan frakes and michael dorn be a great casting for a run of the odd couple <laughs> oh absolutely like oh i God. could see frakes as as uh a, a, uh a oscar and Michael Dorn is Felix and the way their, their interplay and the way that they can, it's just, I mean, it was good in TNG. Yeah. It got even better in the movies and it's, I think at its peak in Picard. Absolutely. Season. It's just, it's so wonderful. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Swords are fun. <laughs> no. Yeah. That was awesome. I never knew it was this heavy. <laughs> you had this in here the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's absolutely wonderful. And, th and that's what's great. I think the way they have done this season, they'll have these really, really deep, heavy moments, right? Yeah. Uh, super emotional, super, um, uh, uh, you're, you're so invested in this scene, and all of a sudden it flashed over something else and you get a funny moment to mm -hmm. kind of lighten the mood a little bit. And it, it's just, it's, it's, it is just evident, uh, the writers and, and the, the folks in charge of this, Terry and his staff of how yeah. they have run this season. Um, Absolutely. It's been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And that they understand that, you know, they don't launch into like a five minute slapstick bit, right? Like it's right. just like, like you said, it's just a, a moment to breathe, you know, a moment to sort of let what's just happened kind of percolate for a second and to give us just a, huh, you know, yeah. because if it's just this constant, if it's just dr drama all the way through, you know, you, you kind of lose something, you know, um, you need those, you need it broken up a little bit, I think. Yeah. It's it's like eating a yeah. whole bag of Sour Patch Kids and then taking a break and having a nice bite of steak. You know, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like a, you need a little break from the, the one thing. And that was a really bizarre, what? that was really, that didn't quite, it sounded better in my head, I guess. I don't know. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's just like that. <sighs> <laughs> I don't know how that I, that really didn't come out. The it's, it's, <laughs> do you mean like okay. the other way around? Like no, do I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm sorry for those of you watching. Forgive me. It's not my greatest moment. That was, that was awesome. I love that. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Uh, yeah. Not to not to not to be the train conductor and derail off again here, but no, no, all good. So we've got we've got four of them now. They're mm -hmm. kind of they're kind of trapped on the board on the board cube. Um, you know, Jack and Picard and Worf and Riker. And then we get the transition now to the Enterprise and the Enterprise is time to save the day. And we've got some some great, great moments in there. Um, I don't remember if we if Beverly already had her moment with with the weapon systems and no, and her no. awesomeness not, there. Not, yeah, this is during yet. that. OK, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the attack run is during that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But we get the kind of now they found where the beacon is. Mm -hmm. They know they got to go inside of the cube to destroy the beacon, which I felt was very much like Okay, I was starting to feel like Return of the Jedi right there when they're gonna go right. Yes, go, Millennium go. Falcon into the Death Star. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so now they get to go in, and they're going. Oh, it's impossible. We don't think we can do it. 
because they're looking. I mean, at the and, and yeah. I mean, if you look at the the readout on the screen, it's like like it's actually crazy if you look at yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I I did very much appreciate the 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 big wide shot that we got of the Enterprise and this this monstrosity like this Lovecraftian, you know, like, like this is the board cube to end all board cubes. You know, this yeah. is not just, this is not a standard, a standard issue board cube that we're dealing with here. So it was, it, it was just really nice because having the enterprise become this speck next to it um, sets us up for a realistic ride through it, you know? Um, yeah. Like, like, like the call, like calling back to, that um, slightly concerning um, turbo lift ride in Discovery. Oh no, you guys oh. haven't seen that. No, I don't think you. I don't know, Jenny. Yeah. Why don't you spoil it for us? <laughs> well, tell us about that. Anyway, tell us, what, uh... tell us about the Guardian of Forever again, shall you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's it's nice to see the laws of physics apply here. Yeah. For... Mm, you're talking about when they're inside the board cube. Meaning that that the size of the ship compared to the size of the oh, board cube makes yeah. sense for yeah. the 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 distance and the speeds that we see. Yeah. Okay. Ensuing, but yeah, Beverly. Yeah, that was cool, right? That was awesome. That was. So awesome. She's learned a thing or two since her days yes. of being a doctor. <laughs> and I just love everyone. Kind of just yeah, <laughs> yeah. Out. And she's just like. <laughs> Yeah, because like the line before, Jordy says, "Oh no, we're we're on manual. You know, we don't have automated yeah. weapons." Now. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's like, I yeah. got this. I got this. I really did good. I really did good. Mm -hmm. So, so we, good. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So we have a cool moment. Like everyone has their moment. We have we have a cool moment now with data, and data. You know, and it was, he was forced, so there was a bit of foreshadowing, sorry, I just thought of this, there's a bit of foreshadowing before, right, because Data was saying, hey, I want to go to the, I'm yeah. going to go to the cube, right, I'm going to go to the cube, and they're like, no, Data, you got to stay, we need every advantage we can get, and and you yeah. being on the ship is is an advantage, so mm -hmm. that completely uh, worked out, I mean, they wouldn't have been able to to navigate through the board cube without him, yeah. so, so totally worked out there, so we had that cool scene with data and his gut feeling. Would you guys, <laughs> would you guys think about the moments of that and then flying, flying through the, flying through the cube? Start with Zach. What'd you think Zach? Uh, okay. So I'm going to give you a twofold answer here real quick. Oh yeah. Okay. First answer. First part of the answer. Uh, visually it was fantastic. It looked yeah. awesome. You know, uh, this this ship flying through, and noticing, yeah. and and, da and da data's like hacking away on the computer console, yes. and he's all like kind of smirking about it. You know, it kind of reminds me of uh, generations when he's searching for those precious little life forms. You know, and singing that little doo -doo 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 -doo, you know song, and just very like happy go lucky data and everything. And, um, so visually stunning. It was awesome looking. Just this this, yeah, kind of. I mean, it's great to cross streams here, but kind of remind me that Millennium Falcon flying through the Death Star, you know, and all that stuff. Uh, there's a th th this particular scene of the of the well, this and then another scene right after this is the only kind of real nitpick I have for the whole episode, personally, where I, I, I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. But scientifically, I don't know if it's very accurate. Like you have a very tight space, right? You're in space, right? So if you if something's flying and and in in Battlestar Galactica, I thought they did a pretty good job of this, where a ship would fire its thrusters and it would start moving this direction, but it's yeah. not going to just all of a sudden turn on a dime like this, mm -hmm. you know, like a fighter jet or something would in space, right? You'd have to have a massive amount of force to then move that ship the opposite direction and change its course of momentum. Not to get all crazy in in the weeds here, but I don't know if, sci and I, this is probably really stupid to even go into this, but like scientifically, if the Enterprise D being that big of a ship could really turn on a dime that quickly in that tight of a space, even with the advanced, I, I just, I, I don't know, I don't know how believable it was for me personally, mm. that the Enterprise could maneuver that well inside of the board that in that tide of space because we've never seen the enterprise do that before mm 
and Jordy restored it, but I don't think it's like he didn't add in some tanks of NOS, you know, <laughs> to all of a sudden make this thing. So again, it's very nitpicky. It's not that it was a bad scene. I think it was visually stunning and fantastic, but was it the most accurate thing? And, you know, could the Enterprise D really do that in that small of a space? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, an, I'm not going to say one way or another, but I don't know that it could have actually done that. I, I don't know. Some people might get mad at me for saying that, but that again, I, I like the scene a lot. I just don't know if it was the most, even in the Star Trek world, if it was the most accurate thing that could have been done. I don't know if that answers your question or not, but no, no. I think Jenny has, I think Jenny has your answer though. I have, I have, <laughs> <laughs> she's looking, she's right. I have thoughts. Um, I have thoughts. There, there's one more little as part of this when they mm. get to after they go through it and do this thing and find the thing and come back there's one more little nitpick i have but it's yeah. it's it's it very again it's very nitpick when you're having this when you're splitting hairs like this that means it's good right <laughs> that means that the episode was so good mm. that there's you're really you're just you know and i'm not i try not to be a nitpicker about stuff yeah i just try to enjoy it for what it is and that's exactly what i did but this kind of stood out to me personally mm. but, you know, jenny what about you <laughs> um I didn't think about that at the time. Um, and just in you talking about it, because my my brain likes to fill in the gaps. You know what I mean? Like I like to sort of I'd be like, okay, given that, yeah, given that, what could it be? What's you know? Um, so A, now it was obviously not as fast, but I know that we have some examples of the Enterprise being able to, you know, um, like in Booby Trap when Picard is um, mm. navigating them out of the out, out, out of the um, the asteroid field. Yep. Um, now that was just on thrusters, to be fair. Yeah, um, and it wasn't, it wasn't the, the, the turning and all this, like the way that the yeah. ship would bank and stuff, it wasn't yeah. as much like that, like it True. was in this episode. But I, I, yeah. I understand what you're saying, yeah. Um, now add in the fact that you've got data who is a supercomputer who and again i mean we're you know like like you know i know inertia like again i totally get what you're saying um the size of the ship actually shouldn't really make a difference one way or the other because in a vacuum it's moving it's moving you know um whether it's whether it's a little guy or a big guy, it's still going to need basically the same force at the same speed. To, anyway, mm -hmm. um, but I think, I don't know, like, I think I was just so damn happy to see mm -hmm. that ship doing what it was capable of doing, yeah. whether what it was capable of doing was actually within the laws of physics or not, I don't know. Um, but But to see it just, like kicking butt you know what i mean oh like, yeah it, 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 yeah no. yeah like like <clears throat> so it's it's very so i don't really have like a proper rebuttal honestly to <laughs> to your yeah, question i mean I I, I I don't have a problem with the scene yeah, I yeah just, again, like, no, i'm no. splitting hairs here i'm really yeah. Yeah. it's not I mean, a problem with the scene i just it, it's one of those things like ah, oh, can it could it really in that time that's all i was really getting yeah getting. no no like i mean honestly you're you know you you've got this happening basically in the eye of Jupiter where if we're talking physics, I mean, everybody really ought to be crushed at this point <laughs> by the, by the massive um, G forces there. So, I mean, we're already kind of like taking a step back in terms of, in terms of the, the like complete scientific, but yeah, yeah I totally yeah. get what you're saying. Like, absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm not way out I, in left field then. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm, I'm going to argue that Data is so good and he's got this extra like instinct now that he is just so skilled at, you know, firing, firing thrusters. <laughs> like he's got all of these things happening all at the same time. And he's like, just able to do all these tiny little adjustments that are making whatever is happening possible. Yeah. Yeah. That's you, you, you could, I mean, you, you could argue, may, I don't, you could argue mm. just maybe the, because of the tight space that the ship may not respond as quickly as data is because data is so fast, but I could mm. totally see where you're coming from too. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. Like we could, this could be like, this could be an entire podcast. I'm just like, how did this happen? How is yeah. this possible? You know? Yeah, which for is, sure. Which is awesome. Like, 
that's yeah but then the bottom line for this scene is just the enterprise d getting her her moment that she never even really got in the movies you know i mean right. generations a, yeah. a 40 year old klingon bird of prey blew her up like really yeah you know so this is tell us how you really feel about generations oh man <laughs> I, have, I have things to say about generations. i bet you do well chris what about you how did you how did how did what did you think of this this moment actually jenny brought up this awesome point is like yeah this was you know i said earlier everyone had its moment but this is the enterprise d's this is the moment right well, she's a character. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's, yeah. She was the main character in TNG, right? Yeah. I mean, the ship is. The ship is yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank goodness Jordy took such good care of her to put her back together so she could do all those amazing stuff. Amen. Amazing, <laughs> amazing kind of maneuvers in, in this episode. So I, I thought it was uh, visually uh, visually great. I wish I could have seen this like in a movie theater, right? This oh felt God. like something to see in a movie theater. Like on that IMAX that they did for the yes. final showing? Yeah. Oh, could you imagine that scene on IMAX? You're just... I can't even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like visually like amazing, beautiful, fun, entertaining and fun, fun to watch. Um, yeah. I really love the uh, one of my favorite scenes is where the, the four of them on the Borg cube are waiting to be transported up. And so, you know, props to Deanna, too, because Deanna is the actual actually the only the one that found found them. Um mm -hmm. But the, the Enterprise comes, and you see it kind of come over, and you, we get to see the Enterprise from the underside, and these, yeah. these lights are shining down. And I thought, oh, what a, uh, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to pause there because, like, wow, that's such a great kind of scene. And you, you get to see that, and then they're beamed aboard. Um, Jenny, you're absolutely right. This was just the, the, the Enterprise D's kind of moment, you know, mm. and the, he comes out with, with flying colors. Um, and I think, I think, what, just was just great it's because it's so well lit in the bridge that it can do that yes, exactly well and the carpet makes it speaker <laughs> yeah. right totally. Yeah. Totally. more aerodynamic absolutely yeah 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 yeah. Wonderful. yeah um you know, so before before they get beamed out right before mm -hmm. um i i thought there were some some nice moments there too uh because you get that nice moment with Riker. this is where they don't think they're gonna make it Mm -hmm. and Riker says uh, something to the effect I love you and Zadi and uh, we'll be waiting like uh, our boy me and my boy uh, so I thought oh that that was beautiful and the really 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 touching moment before they beam, yeah. beam them up but so thank goodness thank goodness they were safe they got beamed aboard and mm -hmm. and you Which, have the <laughs> go ahead Zach I was gonna say didn't didn't you love that line where Worf goes there was a moment today when I was worried we might actually survive this. <laughs> yeah. You know, like from yeah. War, War's perspective, he's been all in, he's been in all of these epic battles, these yeah. epic battles. He's got to be thinking to himself, you know, which battle, because totally like which Klingon's greatest honor is to die in battle. And he's been on, on all of these, these great battles and yeah, he hasn't died yet. So I don't know what Worf is thinking, but that's got to cross his mind. Like, yeah, what else has he got to be in? You know, <laughs> to, yeah. The, the 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 you mentioned about the the scene where the moment where um the Enterprise D shows up to save the day, right? Mm -hmm. And they beam out Riker and, mm -hmm. and Worf. Um, or I'm sorry, they beam out. Well, they beam out Riker Worf, but they also bring beam out Jack and yeah and Picard. And um, that was the one other little nitpicky mm. thing I had where I'm like, okay, they blow this huge, there's this huge hole blown in, uh, right above them where they're in that room. Was there some type of force field that instantly went in or because otherwise they would just just gotten sucked out into the vacuum of space or oh, I yes. mean, <laughs> I, 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 that oh. part to me, I didn't feel like was, was, I don't know if it was the shot or whatever, if they, maybe they could have had something that would have signified, that there was a buffer otherwise how do they survive that like oh the ceiling's blown off but they didn't actually get blown off into space that was my other little again i'm splitting hairs other little nitpicky thing but it was cool it's like all of a sudden you look up and there's the enterprise d mm. to save the day so um yeah the, the the d definitely got her her moment to shine in this episode which i think was really important for fans especially i think it was really important um yeah. right like like you said chris and jenny that um you know, she didn't ever really get that particular moment in the yeah. movies like she should have. She was taken down by a friggin' 
bird of prey, four-year-old bird of prey. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, all the stuff she survived and then she gets taken out by a yeah. bird of prey. So I, I also have the Enterprise D model in a box. So I need to- nice. I need to buy a new one and actually, and actually, <laughs> yeah, kind of start over on it. There you go. Yeah. So they, they mm -hmm. are, they are able to, so they, they shoot the beacon, the, the beacon mm -hmm. inside. There's this causes a chain reaction, a lot of the, just like the Death Star. And we have this, <laughs> this, this really, really neat kind of visual scene where the Enterprise D is, is leaving the, the, the cube as it destroys and then or as it gets destroyed. And then we've got the, all of the assimilated crew throughout Starfleet now becoming, I guess, disassimilated, unassimilated, unassimilated. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now they've, now they're unassimilated and, and um, that's good. We get some nice visuals with Jordy seeing his daughters yeah. uh, back to normal. So that's nice. And so we have that conclusion of that uh, conclusion of the imminent threat right there. And, and then we kind of transitioned its transition to, like several concluding scenes in the episode, which mm -hmm. which I I thought I thought were nice. I think the first, you know, first concluding scene was this nice exposition from Riker, where he's he's saying Captain's log, and it's kind of interesting. He says, "Well, Stardate, let's call it Stardate One," mm -hmm. and I think that was neat. You see the two ships. I think the I think the two ships were the Enterprise and the Titan going yeah. along together. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that that was beautiful. That reminded me of Star Trek Six a lot. That yeah. Scene. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and we've got, you know, Beverly now becoming uh, an admiral, and she's now head of Starfleet Medical, and trying to, um, she's healing everyone that uh, that's been affected by the that transporter DNA that the changelings have done, and she's also finding other changelings. And we've got a really nice scene with Seven and Tuvok. And what did you guys? What do you guys think about that? Jenny will start. <laughs> Zach is thinking. <laughs> we'll, start with, we'll start with Jenny. I I, I agree. I think it was yeah. lovely. Yeah. Um. It was really. It was very nice to see to to get a chance to see real Tuvok. Um, yeah. Given Not that we'd only seen, yeah, yeah, that we'd only seen Chuvok up until now. So Chuvok. Um, <laughs> I I get a lot of my stuff from from Twitter. Just so you know, it's okay. It was still I'm great. Just, yeah, just like um, the Borgatti and and PB and J. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um. So yeah, like like that was lovely, and 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 he and Seven really did have have a close connection on Voyager. So it was it was very very nice to have him there um in lieu of Janeway um which would have also been lovely but for a number of reasons which Terry has explained that wasn't possible yeah. um uh and we and it makes sense um but yeah and you know we're kind of given the like she she's basically ready to walk because she knows she's in you know big trouble for doing a bunch of, you know, hijacking and, <laughs> you know, disobeying orders and uh, getting the ship, you know, half blown up. And, um, but as it turns out, we've got this lovely, um, the, the uh, officer evaluation that Shaw sent in prior to their, so this is, that's the cool thing. I mean, that, this is coming from even before she had disobeyed his orders yeah um which is which is kind of um yeah so despite the fact that even at that point he was keeping her at arm's length and calling her um commander seven sorry commander hansen yep. um that he still had come to the realization that she was an excellent officer um and was a you know bit of a maverick and maybe didn't fit into the mold but maybe the mold needs to be you know, changed. Um, so it was really nice to see Captain Shaw again. That was great. And seeing, seeing Jerry Ryan, um, her, her act, I mean, I mean, she's a phenomenal actress, um, but she, as she's listening to Shaw, just, ju just what's happening with her face, just, just her reaction to that um, was so seven 
like like I feel like I've seen her um it 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 just it's her reaction there felt so true to the character where it's once again she's she's having this moment of realizing I'm not alone and I'm not a monster and I'm not you know that I actually have value and there's just all of these sort of things happening at the same time um yeah and that he uh recommended her promotion to captain so um that was pretty and it was pretty cool that it was Tuvok was the one to be able to give her that news I thought yeah yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely <laughs> Zach yeah no I I I thought the scene was good I liked it <laughs> um the the uh, I, the the um quote here that I I got from Shaw where it, in his his review of, of seven where he said you know Hansen's reckless she's unrelenting doesn't give a damn about protocol or procedure however she's brave and loyal to, and the book that she writes is going to be great and the rules she breaks maybe they were broken to begin with I think that's wonderful um I think I think in I think in the in, in the real world if she was in the military uh it wouldn't be a happy ending for her <laughs> I hate to say it, it would not be happy. There's, it wouldn't be this. Oh well, you you did this terrible thing, but you did something good, so we're gonna overlook that. I don't think it would have turned out as well for her. That being said, I think that um, that Shaw recognized the potential of her early on, mm -hmm. and while he didn't agree with the, what she did, obviously, um, he didn't agree with the things and the way in which she did them. He realized that she had a unique way of getting stuff done on her own. Right, something that she had learned mm -hmm. from her time on Voyager, obviously, and the example she had with Seven or with uh, uh, Jane Wayne and the rest of the crew, as well as what she had learned since they arrived back at Earth, all the way through season one and two of Picard and in, into this. Um, it's yeah, I think I think it's foreshadowing of of the mm -hmm. the events at the end of this, right? Where um, what we see at the end uh, with mm -hmm. her and, and Rafi and and the, um, the other ship. Um, so yeah, I thought it was good. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, there there are some other. We get some nice wrap wrap ups. Get some humor with Data and therapy with Deanna. So I yep. thought that <clears throat> that was funny. So Data is gonna come to terms with that, I guess, over the years. And we've yeah. got Deanna's frustration. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. so that'll be that'll be funny. Got uh, Worf and Raffi, and it was I thought really nice. It was special to see Raffi kind of reconnect with her family and and mm -hmm. we learn that Worf has kind of shared all of these commendations that that Rafi has gotten over the years these kind of covert clandestine commendations that, that she had and that's mm -hmm. been good for her to get that recognition so I think that's that's awesome for Rafi and we get the yeah. yeah we get the return of the Enterprise D to the the fleet museum with with Jordy and you know it's I felt okay. At least it's it's there. It can be they can reuse it anytime they want. Absolutely, yeah. And we get that special moment with with uh, Riker and Picard and Jordy, kind of their last look at the bridge for now mm -hmm. of of the Enterprise D and shutting it down. So 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 that was special. I thought I, I thought that was good. And and you're right that Enterprise D was a character in itself, and she needed that. Mm -hmm. She needed that. And we get Beverly, you know, we, then we transition, I think, a year later. Yep. Yeah. 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 Now we're transitioning to, we see Jack in a Starfleet uniform. I did not expect that. But we no. see. <laughs> Same. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got Beverly and Jack going into space dock in the shuttle. Mm -hmm. And we have the reveal that happens there. And so who wants to talk about that first? <laughs> um, sure, I'll go. Why not? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Since you all are chomping at the bit to go. Uh, very briefly, yeah. as we wrap this this episode up, um, I, I would say that the I don't know if I'm a fan of of the of the Titan being renamed the Enterprise G. I just kind of feel like it's a smaller ship. You're you're you have a brand new captain. And the Enterprise has always been the flagship, right? As as far as we've known, the Enterprise has almost always been the flagship of the Federation. I I uh, I don't know. I'm I'm not sure. I'm not sure if rebranding it 
the inner i was actually i was actually thinking they were gonna maybe rebrand it like the uss picard mm. or something like that vice the another enterprise um but it was it was it was also fitting too so um not my favorite you know uh 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 rebranding of a starship but um it was it was also it was also a little a little bit emotional because you're like okay now you have this this new enterprise right i think i do think you're taking away from the titan a little bit but you have this new enterprise with a new captain and it's kind of a passing of the torch mm -hmm. i feel like so what about yeah. you jenny um i again no expectation of that happening so i was oh, and and seeing picard's reaction was was pretty pretty awesome um and i think it's i think it's a smart move in terms of the fact that they've spent um they've spent 10 episodes letting us get to know this new character um yeah. that had a different name but you know remains the same ship uh regardless and and i like the ship the, yeah, the ship itself. yeah right. i love the design it's a yeah it's a good ship yeah so it's so it's uh, for for me mm -hmm. it was exciting just thinking about the potential of if we do get to see more of it you know that we we already know this ship a little bit you know like that it's that 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 we're kind of friends with it already and i think that's i think that's kind of neat um yeah i i like that what about you chris yeah well, I, I actually had the immediate same thought that you had, Zach. Like it was when uh, Zach, um, Jack says something like family. <clears throat> he said that word. Um, and Picard says their names mean almost nothing. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, oh, is it going to be called the USS Picard? Actually, right. what was my, my first kind of That's thought. what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then I saw, oh, okay, the Enterprise. And, and Picard's, his facial expression was incredible. Um, you know, that was, that was incredible. Um, and so I was like, okay, it's the Enterprise. But then I also was wondering what happened to the Enterprise F? Did I miss something with the Enterprise F? Oh, so it, it I, was on its way to being early <clears throat> decommissioned. Yeah. I oh, guess it was. was. Yeah, there was, there was damage done in an incident somewhere during some rescue operation. It, it, they, 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 they released some ship logs um, mm -hmm. on Instagram prior to, to the season coming out and they said that it was like oh. slotted for decommission it was basically that that um because because start because uh star trek online was where the f um came from and i think they didn't necessarily want to use that ship as the new enterprise going forwards but they wanted to um pay homage to it because yeah. there, it, there are a lot of people who are attached to the f so i think that was just the sort of easy way to bring it in and bring it out <laughs> i love it and i love the look of the f2 it was an mm. awesome looking ship really beautiful mm -hmm. ship especially the way they just dis they display it you know on that yeah that, that coming nice. out of, yeah. yeah oh okay i learned yeah. something I'll yeah learn that. yeah and well actually and i did feel similarly zach i felt like well it seems like the titan kind of did a lot and um <clears throat> i felt like yeah. oh, it's kind of too bad to lose the name mm -hmm. of the titan yeah. um but yeah it was so that's okay too so yeah. it was it was worth seeing that reaction on Picard's face. On yes. How that went. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So the you know the episode kind of we come to ten forward, and I think some beautiful moments with everyone together. Mm -hmm. Ten forward. I think we have an amazing toast from Picard right there, and that you know that toast Shakespeare. It's from mm -hmm. Yep Julius Caesar. So so I think that that was an amazing beautiful toast there. And we get a poker game. Right? So good to end with that, just like in all good things, right? The end mm -hmm. of all good things. So beautiful, beautiful there, and that that poker game, and them enjoying and celebrating. I thought it was very, very touching because a very joyous moment to kind of conclude it and do that as the as the credits come. Mm -hmm. I think I think I saw Doug post on social media that Terry let the camera roll for like forty minutes. Yeah. yeah, that scene, and just let it roll, and it, so yeah. it's you talk about true authenticity. I don't even think the actors were acting in that moment; no. they were just together having fun. They were yeah. they were yeah. made up to look like their characters, but that was, I mean, how, I mean, they I, were, I, yeah, they were 
they were improvising he said that they were just basically yeah. like you're just hanging out you're, yeah. yeah you're who you are but just yeah just just keep playing i think it was i think it was wonderful um mm-hmm. I, I i now that i've seen it i don't know that they could have ended it any way different no. it was very fitting um mm-hmm. uh, obviously tribute to all good things and now jenny has a 2.0 painting to do yeah right yes, I do. Of the final scene from picard season three that could be yes, that, that could be a wonderful piece and um, it will be yeah yeah i just have yeah. to yeah wrap a couple things up and then i'm on it but yeah. um yeah this scene um was very special i thought i mean i i like live here you know what i mean <laughs> like i i so it, it was it was very meaningful to me to see it but it was it what I liked were the differences between all good things and this new moment. Um, I liked the fact that in this moment, it was Picard that pulled the card out. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like Picard was, you know, not just joining the game, but initiating the game. Yep. Um, and I love that, you know, with all good things, it was, it was the thing that, that, that I loved about all good things is that that moment felt like, um, we were just seeing this is just another day basically and they're going to keep 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 exploring and keep traveling and you know so we're not it, it wasn't the end of their time on that ship it wasn't um and i like that this had the same the same kind of kind of feel where they're you know they're they're not all saying goodbye to each other they're just out kind of having having a moment where they're celebrating and um but i love the difference in each of their characters between all good things and this it's like they've all had a chance to kind of kind of come into being their best selves you know um you've got will and deanna who have really you know they've been through the ringer but they are at a point where they're sort of launching into like the next stage of their lives um as empty nesters um you know you've got data being as close to human as he's ever been and sort of setting out on that journey. You've got Jordy, um, you know, with the family and everything that goes along with that. You know, you've got Beverly back in from the cold um, and you've got Picard sitting there with a grin on his face. You know, that that to me, um, above everything else really shows I think the the journey that he's been on between that moment and this one, you know, that he is finally just with his family and happy, you know, and really yeah. truly happy and fulfilled. Um, yeah, I thought it was great. <laughs> yeah. Now, Chris, there is one more moment post this scene. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> at for those of you who who have watched it, and maybe you didn't know this, but at the end of the main credits that we're used to seeing from the end of each episode, there's a particular scene that I immediately thought of you when it came on. How did you feel about that? I'll let you kind of deliver the scene here, but mm-hmm. how did you feel about this scene um, post credits and and when that when it came on? Yeah, post credits, we get this beautiful image of of the ship in front of a red star. Jack unpacking his bag and then Q reviewing like revealing himself and coming in and then and Q starting that conversation with Jack and um and Jack going oh you're Q I thought the trial ended and Q saying no well it's just begun for you (laughs) (laughs) yeah I thought it was I thought it was I thought it was fitting I thought it was right I'm very glad they did it like I said I said last week I felt like Q was part of this so he should he should have been in it so Major really, foreshadowing there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm really glad that they did actually. Um, you know, we'll we'll get into like our, our final thoughts mm-hmm. on because you know, seasons one and two kind of affected everything else that that, that yeah. happened. But I'm I'm yeah. I'm glad, really glad. What did you guys feel? Same. Same. I, yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was I fitting. Shrieked. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, Q's not dead. We well, yeah. okay, that 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 makes sense. It yeah. it completely makes sense. Um exactly. I think it was it was very fitting and it 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 really in my opinion it it just it it uh lends itself to a lot more questions 
of, okay, th this seems like this could be the beginning of an idea that they have to try to get going. It leaves it open at least like, Oh yeah. Maybe we're going to get Jack and seven and the enterprise G and that's the new ship and mm -hmm. captain seven and all this stuff. Um, so yeah, let's, let's wrap into some final thoughts. though as, as we, as we finish out our, our look here at Picard season three, um, and let's 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 kind of give our overall thoughts. So give your overall thoughts, and then your 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 final rating on a scale of one to five com badges. So as as you've been our guest uh, for the past five episodes or so, Jenny, give us your your overall final thoughts of of Picard season three, and then how you would rate it on a scale of one to five com badges. Um, I am I'm very satisfied. I'm thrilled. I'm um overwhelmed in a lot of ways because it because it really did exceed any kind of expectation I had going in um I I didn't expect them to I I, I don't know I expected I didn't expect them to dig so deep with all of the characters um and I'm so glad they did like I'm just oh I, I think they just really they really nailed it um and in terms of in terms of how it sits in the whole arc of the Picard series, I think it really, I think it really works. I think it was a great ending um, to that, to that arc. Um, just, just, just thinking about where Picard was in the first episode of the first season, you know, alone, like he said, alone in his vineyard waiting to die to where he is at the end, surrounded by his friends, happy, fulfilled, um, you know, he has a family. And the the run of the two first seasons really set him up, I think, to be able to open himself up to Jack and the, the idea of Jack and um, be able to understand where Beverly was coming from. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I see now this last, this last scene with Q and I'm looking back at season two being like, so did Q, is that like, did, did he go, oh, you're, oh, I'm going to go make sure your dad's all set for you. You know, like I, it's there, I, 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 I don't know, but, but I mean, Q, Q gave him a gift in the second season that I think was crucial in getting him to where he needed to be for the third and I think the writers did a beautiful job pulling that all together I know there was some crazy stuff in the second season um but I mean in terms of the Picard arc um for for the character I think it I, I think it all worked you know I think it was you know I'm 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 really interested to see how people feel about the show you know 10 years down the road looking at it as a whole because it, um, yeah, I think as a as a character study, as um, like you know, Star Trek isn't Star Wars. You know, Star Trek really is about the people, and yeah. I think that's, um, yeah, like, and I think this this show, and and particularly season three, um, really really showed us that, really gave us that. Um, I mean, I have lots to say, but I, <laughs> I'll let you go. Ahead. I okay, so go on for so like half what? What's what's your season oh. three rating? One to five com badges. Five? Are you kidding me? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, still I, had, I had to ask. <clears throat> yeah, I know. <laughs> five out of five. five out no of five. hesitation. Yep, absolutely. Okay. All right, Chris. I'll give my thoughts, and then we got to leave it to you to bring us home, so to speak, and, and finish <laughs> us off here. I think it's only fitting. Um, I, uh, real quick, cause I've shared a lot of my thoughts over the course of our 10 episode review we've done, Chris. Um, I think that this show gave me many things that I didn't realize I needed when it came to Star Trek. Um, I, 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 I guess I didn't realize how much I needed a TNG cast reunion in this way. Right. And bringing these characters back to life, you know, after what, all these years of watching TNG and the movies and so forth and, and seeing everything, um, whether people liked it or not. I mean, Nemesis that the way it ended, I was like, okay, that's it. And that's the way, that's the way it ended. And they brought Picard back, but the first two seasons were, uh, you know, mm. I, I, I just didn't feel like they hit the mark, but man, season three, season three really was like getting an eighth season of TNG minus, I mean, you don't get 20 some episodes, but it really felt like that 
the, it, it was such a fitting, amazing way to wrap up this with this crew. Although we could potentially, I guess, get more at some point, but in general, like if we never got anything TNG related again, I mm-hmm. felt like this was a fitting way to end it. The characters are in a great place. They've saved the galaxy again. <laughs> and it's like you said, Chris, I love the way you framed it. It's been, it's been, I think Picard season three was one of the greatest character studies in the whole franchise. I really do. And that's saying a lot coming from a DS nine fan like me. I really, I I really do. I think it was, it was fantastic. So Terry and his crew and Dave Blass and Doug Drexler and, and Denise and and everybody involved. Thank you Mm -hmm. so much for giving us this because I don't, I didn't realize that this was missing. And, 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 and now that I have it, I'm, I'm very uh, happy with it. I'm very satisfied. And um, I'm excited to see what's coming down the road. I have hope. I have hopes for future Trek mm-hmm. uh, and what it, the possibility of what it could become. If they follow the blueprint that's been established here in season three of Picard, they follow this blueprint that Terry and his crew have laid out. Yeah. Star Trek is, is, is going to continue on for another 50 plus years uh, as far as, you know, making new stuff and everything like that. And I think we're in for, I mean, what, what a time to be a fan. What a time to be a fan. It's 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 mm-hmm. amazing. So with that being said, my rating, of course, is five out of five com badges. I, I I I how could you not? You know, any any slightest bit of nitpicking that I would have had would have been splitting hairs yeah. and did not detract from the overall my overall feelings from this from this season. So with that being said, Chris, uh take us home, my friend. Give give us your final thoughts and your rating of Picard season three as we wrap up our our uh, our last review of this of this series. Awesome. Also, we have Jenny as five out of five. We have Zach as five out of five. I I also am five out of five. And I'll I'll give some 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 final thoughts. I really want to recognize like and Jenny that was beautiful. Zach that was beautiful. I want to recognize the creators of of season three. I think they had some challenges going in to Definitely. the creation of, of season three and i thought they did a they did a lot of work um, did a lot of creation uh, studied a lot of past star trek and created something that was incredibly special not not only for new audiences but for audiences that have loved star trek for over 30 years and also given new audiences a compelling reason to go back and watch a lot of these these other seasons that were there so just just They've done a tremendous job. So thank you for the creators for doing that. When when I think about season three, I did, I loved season three. I loved what, what they did with it. Um, there are some things that because of the existence of the first two seasons, right? I, I feel like there, there are things that could have been different in season three, but the creators did the best they could, right? So <clears throat> I really, I loved the character of Laris that was in season one and season two. And I thought she did a tremendous job also trying to move Picard forward in his life. Mm-hmm. But but I I can't I don't I think we all of us can't help but think of what would the reunion be like for Picard and Beverly if there was not Laris. Mm. Things could have been very, very different. And the conversation with Picard on the board cube and Beverly on the Enterprise when they're looking for for um for Jack could have been could have been very very different mm. so those are just some some of the things um you know that that were there not to take anything away from from season three or season one and two that exist kind of by, by themselves so i i think as a as a character study for picard i love overall that they have brought and kind of re- recognized um kind of fundamental things that are that are with men and, and, and fathers, right? So the, the, the inability to let emotions in, um, the, the innate desire by some men to like want to keep a distance from themselves and other people that may be close to them. <clears throat> I love that the idea of over, over this series that they have explored those types of vulnerabilities and, and how to, how to have, people evolve men evolve and Picard as a character evolve and the recognition that you know the most fulfilling parts of people's lives are to have the the closeness and intimate relations of those that are close to you and and kind of be part of you and 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 have a family and go through the world like that 
I love that they did that in, in this series. And I think that's kind of the, the core, core essence. He's going through all of these trials throughout season one and season two and these losses throughout season one and season two and coming out transformed. So that, that, that is beautiful. And I think we, the three of us, are probably transformed because we, we have seen this and we've enjoyed that journey by watching Picard. But, but not only that, we've got to kind of share our, our, each of our own perspectives with each other, with Jenny and, and Zach, and kind of share that and, and, and our you know, most kind of our raw feelings on how we felt about that. Um, and I think this experience with the three of us has been beautiful and wonderful and such an awesome journey. And thank you, Jenny, for being a wonderful, wonderful part of it because this <clears throat> would have not been, um, it would have been fundamentally very, very different. It would have been different, but like, like Jordy and Riker say, when they say goodbye to the Enterprise D, it would not have been better. So you have made it, you have made it like such this better and great and wonderful experience for us. And, and we thank you. Thank you. Chris. <laughs> Honestly, I, I I am so grateful that you guys asked me to do this because this this conversation, this ongoing conversation that we've we've had has been the highlight of this experience for me. Getting a chance to really, you know, watch the show, but also like really think about it. You know, um, the way the way you guys um, the analysis that you do and the way that you break down um, the subjects that you're talking about, I'm. I'm a fan for life, you guys. <laughs> you know, I I am I look forward to seeing everything else that you do. And anytime you want to have me back, I'm here. Oh, we appreciate that. <laughs> Thank um, you. Yeah, it's it's been it's been a pleasure having you on with us and um, doing this review. Uh, this was the first time we've done this on this podcast. We we've done mm -hmm. an episode by episode review of a series um and it's it's definitely spurned us moving forward to do other ones uh for those of you who don't know yet we will be doing a episode by episode review of star trek strange new world season two we cannot wait to do that that's more specific episodes so there's not as, as much of a story arc uh mm -hmm. overall story arc which will be fun to really break down an individual episode uh, on that series so um yeah thank you for for being a part of this um we've really enjoyed it and we My hope pleasure all of you out there watching have enjoyed this because we've had an absolute blast um, getting a chance to really dive deep into this series and this season uh, felt really fitting, giving that this the, the tribute that this was going to be for TNG and for, for Star Trek fans alike. So um, with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in and watching us here on the Random Red Shirt podcast. We do very much appreciate it. Uh, again, be sure to go to Instagram and Facebook and like us there. You can also find Jenny in all those places, including Twitter. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, stay tuned for more great content coming up. We look forward to it. Thank you again to our guest host, Jenny, in the last five or six episodes of our podcast for being a part of this. And we can't wait to uh, to talk with you all some more about some more great Star Trek and science fiction. So until next time, take care, and we'll catch you right here on the Random Redshirt Podcast.